Part 5 of our series is Napoleon the Emperor. Now, Napoleon had been a victorious general against Austria in northern Italy. He was also able to claim victory in Egypt because they didn't fall apart till after he left, as well as conquering parts of Israel, Turkey, and Syria. At this point in time, his popularity among the French words was sky high. And he played directly off of each other, taking advantage of the unrest in France and his popularity with the people. He eventually plans and carries out a coup d'etat, which is French for state. Starting at 5 a.m., he brought in military generals and bound them to his plan. Directory, the five man ruling group of France, he arrests three of their leaders. The fourth one, he sent his best right-hand man, lying to them that the other three had signed a document putting him in charge. To his surprise, Barris, that directory member, said, okay, and went off to his estates in rural France. That saved the $5 million bribe Napoleon had planned for him, although his right-hand man will talk to them soon. And lastly, he worked with one other to make sure that man can stay in power. He installs himself as first consul, where consul should be familiar because within our ancient Roman unit, it was one of the highest positions in the Roman Republic, a position that Julius Caesar held, once again showing his obsession with Rome and Julius Caesar. That will carry on after being crown emperor. His crown is literally designed as a Roman Caesar crown. The staff that he is holding has the Roman imperial eagle on it. Even though they're French, hearkening back to these ideas of ancient Rome. He also is attempting to invoke Charlemagne here. He's the greatest French leader ever who creates the Holy Roman Empire, constitutes knighthood, feudalism, and restores France to a full level of glory. However, most dictators, he has to consolidate power. He moves very quickly to work with the state general, the National Assembly, the Convention, the Senate, as it's called now. Napoleon had a charisma about himself, and when he was able to walk into the room, he was able to sway individuals to his side, even though their instincts were to go against him. However, it helped in this particular instance that not only did his words sway them, he had their entire building surrounded with 6,000 loyal military officers, armed to the teeth. He then decided to keep peace, and he picked a referendum. Ending the revolution and stalling back a monarch-like position, the vote showed that the referendum was probably rigged, even though the people were relatively okay with Napoleon taking the power. After all, there were a lot of people who still wanted a royal in charge of the country. The referendum results 3,011,072 vote yes, against only 1,562 no votes. Eventually, he is crowned emperor. To make the biggest show possible, he makes peace with the Pope, fulfilling something called Concordia. The Pope himself, Pope Pius VII, travels to France for the crowning ceremony. A lot of onlookers were surprised, however, it had been planned between the Pope and Napoleon. But when it came time to crowning him, it was not the Pope crowning Napoleon. Instead, Napoleon crowned himself. Napoleon was not willing to look up to the Pope or have the Pope look down at him. In fact, in a private conversation, Napoleon reminded the Pope that he was of the position of Charlemagne, and that Charlemagne had the military. Therefore, the Pope should treat him as a image here was Napoleon next crowning his wife, Josephine, as Empress of the French Kingdom. The Pope regretted this choice. Seeking to restore Catholicism in France, he realized that he had become used by Napoleon and they'll have problems later on down the road. Life of Napoleon in part relatively good. For about three years, there's peace 
and Napoleon is able to stay in Paris and establish some of his domestic policies, starting with the Napoleonic Code. Now, of the 200 meetings that happened to establish the Napoleonic Code, Napoleon was in over half of those, and the meetings that Napoleon in only lasted until 2 or 3 in the morning. They argued about individual laws. Napoleonic Code is legendary because it installs and creates a civil code of laws, something that the United States is hugely a part for our civil society. However, the Napoleonic Code is not very good. It's not very revolutionary, and it definitely doesn't fulfill its dreams. In fact, it establishes the rich in power and gives much more control to men than women. He also solves the grain price problem that are a reoccurring problem with France. He does this because he controls a bunch of kingdoms based upon his military conquests from before. He uses their money to buy up all the grain that they can, and they then ship it to France and keep it as cheap as possible. In this way, he won over the people of France, and these peaceful years were spent ruling as emperor of France until the next war comes that's all of his plans.